patch notes for Phase 1 of the Season 10 PTS have just been released. And while nothing we see here is 100% final, they still give us a very good understanding of what additional aspects on top of the manhunt to expect in the upcoming season. PTSs are here for us to test and attempt to break before the final product is released in the main game. So as per expected, some of what I talk about here has potential to change, depending on how things play out. The new countdown difficulties will be available to try out, normal, for solo, which I'm actually happy about, because I can explore the map a little better. I've been doing it on the existing mode solo, but this is obviously a bit more difficult. This also opens it up to solo players who don't wish to join a match made team, to be able to utilize the area for the fantastic targeted loot drops towards the expertise progression. There is also hard for groups of 8 casual players. I don't see this one being hugely popular. Challenging, which is actually the current difficulty we play countdown on. And heroic, which is best suited for 4-8 to eight hardcore players. Hopefully the loot quality will be significantly increased for that last one. The new challenges or countermeasures will also be added. Skill suppression, explosive resistance, reload speed, armor protection, hostile skill damage resistance, agents hazard resistance, headshot resistance, critical resistance. All of these countermeasures honestly don't really mean much to me. The current countermeasures don't really impact the game at all. I can't think of a time where they have impacted the way I play the game when rushing through this timed mode with seven other players, guns are blazing at all times. It might be a little different on Heroic, but these are just slight increases or decreases on damage, resistance or abilities. Obviously balancing needs to be taken into consideration, but I'd like to see some more impactful and interesting countermeasures that change the way you need to play. Take the global events for example. Imagine the enemies have the golden bullet within their ranks, and the deactivation benefit gives us the opportunity to gain the golden bullet. Now I'm not saying this is the best example, I'm just saying that something other than decreasing your crit chance or ability to heal could be a bit more entertaining to play through. At this stage, if they removed countermeasures altogether, I don't know if I'd even notice. Other changes they're trying out is a way to prevent players from being kicked out of the group by the group leader before and during the extraction. Something that is well overdue. However, I'd love to see the ability before the mode even begins to group vote on a new leader if they haven't started the damn game already. Arquebus Brasos. Sorry to any Spanish speaking listeners for my pronunciation, but this is a new gear brand set. One piece gives 10% skill haste, cool. Two pieces give one skill tier, sweet. Three pieces give 20% ammo capacity, huh? I don't really get it. Most skill builds are either lurking from outside providing support or skill damage. While their weapons are important to increase the effectiveness of their skills, weapon capacity has never really been seen as an issue. Though this might be a sign of a weapon or weapon talent that is yet to be released. Umbra Initiative. Gear set. Two pieces, plus 15% critical chance. Three pieces, plus 30% reload speed. Four pieces give access to two unique talents based on the player positioning. From the shadows and into the light. From the shadows, while in cover, gain 10 stacks per second up to 50. Each stack will give 1% critical damage increase and 0.5 RPM. Buff does not apply while shooting from cover. While out of cover you lose 4 stacks per second at normal speed and 2 stacks per second if running. Into the light. While out of cover and in combat, gain 10 stacks per second up to 50. Each stack will give you 0.5 armor regen when it is consumed. Stacks consume 10 stacks per second only in cover. The chest in the backpack of the set increases the stacks from 50 to 100. This is going to be an absolute beast gear set in my opinion. Maybe not for players who are out there with full squads, but for solo players like myself, increased damage and healing depending on agent stance sounds pretty good to me. But I might need to have a good play around with this and see how viable it actually is in action. On paper though, it sounds pretty interesting. Exotics. Dr. Home, an exotic variation of the M1A. Shooting an enemy with the Dr. Home applies a mark. When killed, Mark Target drops a 15% armor repair kit. The kit doesn't give bonus armor. Only the weapon owner can see the armor repair kit. Once the player picks up the armor kit, all party members receive the heal. We don't know the damage of this weapon yet, but based on the talent alone, this could be an interesting addition for a support player. It doesn't appear to need the wielder to kill the target, just hit it. So I can imagine the user to be spamming the weapon around and collecting the armor kits while the DPS members are taking the enemies down. Bloody Knuckles, 
exotic gloves. Throwing a grenade or striking an enemy with a melee attack activates the Seeing Red buff. Seeing Red grants 25% weapon damage and 100% melee damage. Seeing Red lasts 20 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. While in cooldown, striking an enemy with a melee attack or hitting an enemy with the effect of a grenade will complete the cooldown instantly. Anyone who has teamed up with me knows I like to be up front and in the thick of it. Hell, I even designed a sniper build that allows me to use it up close and personal. This particular exotic piece intrigues me. Not necessarily because of the melee damage increase, though this is a nice addition when resetting the cooldown, but because my need to be so close will actually be rewarded. I already have a couple of builds that I can see this being useful in. Busy Little Bee Exotic Pistol Each shot to a different target increases weapon damage if the player keeps shooting at different targets. Each shot increases 10% to a maximum of 200%. Players have 5 seconds to shoot between each target until they lose the stacks and must start again. When the time is over or the player shoots the same target, they will gain an extra 5% damage for each stack they were able to get on the next shot. The stacks will remain even if the user changes weapons. 5 seconds isn't very long, but I'm interested to try this out. I'm a big fan of sidearm talents, and actually have set my mouse to allow for faster switching between my main weapons and sidearm. But I'm skeptical as to whether this will be adjusted into the ground following the PTS, or if the time limit is just too low to be viable in most situations. Named weapons. Lefty, ACS-12 shotgun, and Stage Left, SOCOM M1A rifle. These both have the perfect sledgehammer talent. Dealing damage with a grenade applies a mark on the target. Targets with marks take 40% more damage to armor and minus 10% movement speed. Grenades are more of an addition to the way I play, not a focus. I'm sure there will be builds that make this viable, but I don't really see this as a talent that I'll often use. As per usual, there are a number of quality of life changes that are being added. I'm not going to read through them, but I'll chuck them on the screen. There isn't anything major to talk about here, but I see a couple of pet peeves being addressed that a number of people will be happy to see, like the option to hide loot beams and the added character customization, allowing players to change body type, skin tone, and face shape after starting the character progression rather than being forced to start a new character. I need to remind you that everything featured here is for the upcoming PTS for Season 10 and is subject to change. Also, if you are planning on taking part in this, a number of the new models and gear will only have placeholders for now. The final art is yet to be confirmed. The preload will be available on August 18th at 1800 CEST and will be live on Friday the 19th with the exact times to be confirmed. Something else I didn't mention is that the new legendary strongholds at Tuttle Basin and National Zoo will also be included. I don't usually try the PTSs out, but after the last one I really felt I was able to provide some solid feedback and some of what I've seen echoed and actioned over time. So I'll definitely be jumping into this one, and I'll fully be keeping up to date with my thoughts. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!